This episode is sponsored by Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a free newsletter that's delivered to your email inbox seven days a week. It catches you up on the business news you need to know in just five minutes, and it's actually interesting and informative. Before Morning Brew, I spent way too much time scrolling through rando Twitter in the morning and never actually learned anything. But now it takes only a few minutes for me to feel informed and ready for the day. Morning Brew was where I first learned about the giant merger between Warner Media and Discovery Inc. And its recent feature on Black Wall Street 100 years later was illuminating and enlightening. If you're at all interested in tech, business, or finance, you should subscribe right now. Right now! Oh, and the best part is that it's free and only takes 15 seconds. Click the link in the description to sign up today. Since the dawn of man, the vampires have walked among us, killing, feeding. Slayeration! Also, the beginning of this Vampire Slayer movie looks like a 1980s masterpiece theater joint. Trained by the Watcher, one Slayer dies, and the next is chosen. The movie would much rather show us a Dark Ages era ceremony where the Watcher chooses the next Slayer, than showing us the last Slayer getting killed by vampires, which is the more exciting play and more involving for the audience. Also, using the same actress to play the ancient ancestor of the modern main character. Whoever made this spirit sign back here should get f***ing detention. Detention for months. They woefully overestimated how much room it would take to spell the word spirit. And even when they started making letters wider toward the end, it was still too late. And we end up with space enough for two more letters here on the right that goes totally empty. And even after that, they couldn't be bothered to use scissors to trim off the excess paper. And it's f***ing embarrassing. Holy sh this cheerleader dance routine, which is subpar at best, goes on for so much some time. Having a hog for a mascot. I am a person, I have a right to the ball. Also, I'm a person, I have a right to the ball, was one of the few things the older neighbor lady on Lake James was able to say that consistently helped me gain an erection. God damn, this is the longest f***ing time out in the history of basketball. During the course of this basketball game, there will be many blocked shots, but none as emphatic as the one the next karate kid just called this guy with. Imagine building the entire back wall behind your home gym's basketball hoop out of glass. What could possibly go wrong? Who's the glass salesman making a fortune on this f***ing place? I want to shake that guy's hand and then punch him in the wiener. Also, look how close the crowd is to the court. Both sides could see someone in the front bleacher road trip a player by accident. Why is this high school basketball court such a lie? This might be a real gym for all I know, but why is there no scoreboard anywhere on the one side that we can see? Being this vague about the place and the time. I get a C plus on the test and he tells me you have no sense of history. If her teacher did in fact say that, how did she get a C plus on her test then? Shouldn't it have been a lot worse? On the books? Oh, you said No way. No THX. <laughs> they don't even have Dolby. First off, THX is just a certification that has jack to do with the actual sound quality. Second off, is this really how high school kids make their movie going choices? By the theater sound equipment? Totally stale and the ushers are like the acne patrol. <laughs> how are you going to other theaters and finding ushers that don't have acne? That's usually the first job a teenager gets when they work at a theater if it's not the concession stand. If you found some magical theater employing ushers without acne, then they're hiring 60 year old retirees and play movies like Howard's End or Indochine. That's the plan. Ooh, what a set. Talking during the movies, especially since you were so concerned about sound quality earlier. God, <laughs> a chill lozenge. At no point in the great 1990s did Chill Pill ever get replaced with Chill Lozenge. Guys, we gotta do something tonight. We gotta go out and party. Sasha Jensen's audition tape for Dazed and Confused somehow ends up in this movie. The movie makes this seem like a dick move to the passenger because her ass is in his face and he somehow has to summon the powers of the god of non-abusers to avoid touching her, when in reality this is a dick move to logic and practicality. Run around the other side or climb in back and then grab and kiss the driver. Even if the passenger seat is empty, this is a moronic way to kiss the driver. So wait, this guy's buddies didn't want to party, so he left them and decided to wander into the abandoned carnival? Kind of makes me wonder why this dude was even in the car with them without knowing what their plans were for the evening. And instead of walking down well-lit roads back to his house, or just getting a ride back home from his friends, he decided to take a shortcut through the area where that one guy got stabbed that one time. What are you, some kind of weirdo or something, huh? I am disappointed in this vampire not screaming his lungs out upon hearing the secret word weirdo as specified by his robot Conky. We take you now to Cholera in the Time of Vampires, starring George Hamilton and Robert Culp, already in progress. Sleep, my master, my own. Sleep. Then why the f*** are you coming in here waking him up to tell him that? First bell, people. Time marches up. Holy sh! I didn't realize Steven Root was in this movie. Removing a sin instantly just for his presence alone. Pipe isn't a name, it's 
fish. Or a road, or an old school weapon. But also saying Pike's not a name, it's a fish, when your name is Buffy, which is not a name, but a playful description of a polished car's exterior. You guys, you just snuck in anyway. Yeah, they did, but there's no way you know that. David Arquette said something about paying good money to watch the movie during that scene, and Luke Perry whispered, no, we didn't, but you didn't hear that. Hey, Buffy, you hungry? I got something for you. Joss Whedon's average everyday table read with female co-stars makes it into the movie. These two guys are talking about not having a car, and yet they just walk from downtown all the way up this mountain to even have that conversation. And maybe they live on the other side of the mountain, so they have to walk over to get home. But these are high school slacker weed dudes. They die halfway up that hill even one time. This is a weird and shitty setting for this scene, is my point. Also, what's with all these assholes in this movie going from well-populated areas to darkly lit murder zones? Even if you didn't believe in vampires or muggers, you'd avoid these places. Yes, but her yabos scoff at gravity. Her yabos scoff at gravity would have been an outstanding band name, but an even better marketing slogan for the Wonder Bra. This is L.A., and he's wearing a thermal shirt, a flannel shirt, and a fleece jacket. This is not a very safe place for you to fall asleep. Why the f*** is the Watcher just casually driving around this place? Why isn't he trying harder to recruit his Slayer? Are you looking for somebody? I was looking for you, actually. Would he be any creepier right now? I want to call the cops on her behalf. I realize you probably need her alone to talk vampires, but you don't need to drag this out with a bunch of that's what she said style comments. You want me to go to the graveyard with you because I'm the chosen one and there are vampires? Buffy would stake cinema sins in the heart. Did you have a dream that you were someone else, Buffy? Someone real. A Magyar peasant girl, perhaps. An Indian princess? Whoever set up the Slayer reincarnation rules is a dick. That supernatural entity set it up so that the Watcher has to scour the f***ing earth for the new Slayer and provides a log of dreams to give each new Slayer so that they'll wonder what the f*** all of it means. And I'm pretty sure this movie inspired the old guard in some way, so f*** that f too. Also, how the f*** did he find her? Did someone spread the word about her awesome cheerleading skills and took a trip to California just to be sure? I never told anybody about this. He knows a couple dreams she's had, and she goes from full skeptic to full believer. I might be more inclined to believe someone is recording me at night and I'm talking in my sleep before believing I'm a chosen one called by ancient time to kill vampires. But I guess everyone's decision matrix is different. I can't believe I'm in a graveyard with a strange man. Honey. My college girlfriend said the same thing to me on our first date. Jesus, did this guy's parents not bury him in a coffin? I know that's an option, but it seems pretty convenient for this movie's vampire shenanigans that he wasn't. This dude has obvious mutation hands and plain as day vampire elf ears, but it takes Luke Perry way too long to realize it. I'm hungry! I'm hungry! I'm hungry! Yeah, but why do you have to eat your buddy? Aren't there plenty of people to feed on out there? There's probably about 10,000 people in L.A. alone who are in a well-populated area and are now wandering through quiet, unlit places as we speak. I have cheerleading practice, okay? I know this is the basic deal with Bubby the Vampire Slayer. Normal girl with normal high school problems who also happens to be a badass vampire slayer. But the characterization here is almost too blasé. It should be much cooler or scarier or more emotionier and have all this dumped on a teenager. Don't you hate it when your parents go and redecorate your bedroom and they put a lifelike Rutger Hauer pillow that you didn't ask for on your bed and you very specifically ask for the Corey Feldman? Are we having a nightmare, Cassandra? Wait a minute. We don't know shit about this girl. She was introduced like five minutes ago. What happened to Sasha Jensen, the dude who wanders around haunted carnivals? Why did they introduce a girl all of a sudden? Guess they thought a scene like this would be too gay for mainstream audiences. And then I swear to God, this girl just disappears in the movie. It isn't really that important, so what the f***? Let's talk about these candles. There are five on each end here, but we are looking at one side as the main view. There are no candles in back on either end for the other two corners of this casket. Are the candles only an east-west based thing? Why candle one side of the coffin and not the other? Why are there so many candles on stands that appear to be about to fall over at any second? The f*** is this entire shot? I'm beginning to think the Watcher's name isn't so much about his relationship to the Slayer, but the fact that he likes to hang around women's locker rooms. Bravo. Holy sh though, man. What if he's wrong about her? What if he's right, but she still misjudges the grab? This is all kinds of f***ed up. All I want to do is graduate from high school, go to Europe, marry Christian Slater, and die. That'll be such a happy occasion. On that day, she'll become Buffy the Vampire Slater. This lazy, undisciplined routine is supposed to pass for her learning to fight opponents using the heavy bag, but it fails on literally every level. Where the f*** are they right now? But watch what happens on this last move she makes if she goes behind the column. You can see her stunt double behind her. Tried to stack a bunch of chairs in the way, but nah, go f*** yourself, movie. Are you saying this principal just looks out the window for kids being late? Certainly he has more important things to do. And he sees Buffy and calls it a day? And is anyone gonna ask where Sasha Jensen's character went? If she is this bad at aim, though, should you really be standing that close to that thing? Every time I see Buffy do something, it's like I'm watching young Diana in Wonder Woman 1984 and wondering how she's showing enough athletic prowess to beat vampires. Except, of course, when it's her stunt double doing the stuff. And 
This has to be the biggest, fakest fly I've ever seen since Eric Stoltz. Also, all her training has made her good at projectile spitting aim. You felt sick, didn't you? You had the cramps? Why would the vampire alert system be cramps? Probably get this line of dialogue in, I guess. My secret weapon is PMS. Why wouldn't her detection system be something else? When it's actually time for her cycle, wouldn't that be confusing? She could be at a movie one night and think, no, these are lady cramps. But there could be a vampire killing someone outside. And no doubt it's probably the person who was supposed to certify the theater for THX, and now they'll never get it. And that would be a double tragedy because she loves going to theaters with THX. I'm out there risking my life. I'm risking my life and you're not doing anything. You fought one vampire, calm down. I'm born each time with the knowledge that my purpose is to prepare the chosen one for her battle. This actually raises a ton more questions than it answers. Like, does he have to grow to Donald Sutherland age before he finds a slayer? Or does he find several slayers while he lives one of his lives? Why isn't he just immortal? What a terrible life this is to prepare for something for decades and not be able to do anything about it until you're nearly 60. I am not a slayer, and I must not interfere even if I want to. Why? Why is the entire world's fate in the hands of one slayer? Why can't there be multiple slayers? I can listen to several different versions of Angel of Death, no problem. I can take it. I'm ready for the multiverse already. Hit me with what you got, multiverse. Car won't start in a horror movie cliche. I guess we're gonna have to call this abomination of the undead a vampire now, aren't we? Paul Rubens hangs on the windshield and snarls. Now he's surfing on top of the van, but he doesn't really seem to pose much of a threat, if I'm being honest. He hasn't tried to get inside the van or break the glass, he just snarls. He's more of an extreme sports enthusiast or jackass crew member than he is vampire at this stage. How did these two assholes catch up to everybody? Pike ran them over and then drove down the road and then drove for quite a while here in the middle of these woods. We haven't seen anything about these vampires having super speed and I wouldn't believe it if the movie told me. How the f*** did she know where to be right now? We haven't seen anything about this vampire slayer having Batman skills and I wouldn't believe it if the movie told me. Is that your van? And holy sh if she knew to be here, why doesn't she know there's another vampire around right now? Guitar Hero. You know this guy? By the way, where the is Pee Wee Ferratu right now? Did he just leave? And later he's like, yeah, my arm was ripped off. And I'm like, that's just a flesh wound, man. You find yourself babbling incoherently to a strange man in your living room. Are you calling me a man? Yeah, sh You gotta watch what you call Luke Perry because his whole livelihood at this point is convincing people he's a teenager at the age of 25. I had him in my grasp. You may still. What's so important about Pike? Why do they care so much? And I've seen the end of this movie, there's nothing special about Pike. Oh, you got to get some. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, sure, grabbing her ass without consent is pretty f***ed up, but why does this guy suddenly feel like he can cross that line? Earlier, when he really wanted to do this, he kept his hands off. Now he can't control himself? I guess is this movie wanted a female empowerment moment and decided this was the way to do it, as if slaying vampires wasn't enough. Look, I understand that the joke is that this basketball coach doesn't have the faintest clue about basketball, but I'm pretty sure this is the dumbest way to show it. This movie dialed its lunacy to about a quarter airplane, and you never go quarter airplane. You gotta go full airplane! You missed practice again today! I Just today? Hasn't this guy been gone for a long time? I mean, he died, and then we saw Buffy do a whole training montage that had to have been at least a couple weeks. Go, team, go! F***ing hell, after Teen Wolf, any supernatural creature can play high school basketball now. Coach, we can't have this. It's not right. You gotta get him out. I Wait, what's not right? You gotta kick him out for what? For being weird? What did he do that was so wrong? I mean, yeah, we know he's a vampire, but they don't. And he didn't break any f***ing rules. What the sh Hard to believe, but this guy grows up to become Ben Affleck in a few years. Also, that makes two Joss Whedon-related projects Affleck has been in. Cancel Ben Affleck! Man, the refs have completely lost control of this game. This is worse than those Knicks Heat games in the 90s. After seeing all this weirdness, these kids kind of shrug their shoulders and get ready to go home. The teen drinking problem in this town must be f***ing awful. This is f***ing Los Angeles and he just happens to be here and just finished fixing up his own bike? Buffy is addicted to motorcycles. Buffy's crampy sense is tingling. Ah, oh, what a great idea this is. Who came up with this superpower? This is gold. <laughs> she vagina necked that vampire and landed on Luke Perry in a compromising position. That's so fun. I hope I see that in Justice League 25 years later, I randomly said in an empty theater back in 1992. We're leaving. We're not eating? She's not ready. Yeah, so said the Watcher, who just tried to kill you, and you just believed him. Don't mind me, I'll just lie here casually eavesdropping on this heartfelt goodbye rather than, well, doing anything else. As Buffy mourns the passing of the Watcher, I've gotta ask again, what the f***? is this mansion. Is this the Watcher's mansion? Did we ever get the 411 on this place? Was he squatting while the Vanderbergs were out of town? A couple of weeks ago, I, I met this guy. Puffy says this and expects her vacuous friends to take it the right way. You mean like hanging out with that homeless poke? Pike. How does Kimberly know Buffy's been hanging out with Pike? It's not like they've appeared in public together. Excuse me for having something important to do. You haven't even told them what you do. How do you expect them to understand where you're coming from when you keep talking all this vague sh 
get out of my facial. I have a recurring nightmare where I'm pleasuring myself to porn, and right as the dude does the thing on the girl, she turns to the camera and says directly to me, Get out of my facial. She walks away from her Diet Pepsi because that is what you do with garbage. He's dead because of me. Because I couldn't lift a hand against Lothos. No, he's dead because despite the whole speech earlier about his role as a watcher and how he never fights vampires, he tried to fight a vampire and promptly lost, like a chump. God damn, Moomy, this is lost f***ing ass Angeles. It's not Convenienceville, Indiana. It's not Coincidence Point, Vermont. It's Los Angeles. You cannot keep cheating like this. We'll wait until Saturday. Why? Because I want to dance. That is a really stupid reason to not just kill the Slayer now. Like, really dumb. You were in Blade Runner, dude. Right about now. Funk Soul Brother, check it out now. F***ing Pepsi. I'm adding 10 cents for all the brother f***ing Pepsi in this movie. Have you seen Jeffrey? If I say no, are you gonna hurt me? Jesus Christ, dude, you know exactly why she hurt you last time. I can see this after repeated beating, sure, but after one incident where you deserved it, you should have gotten your ass beat before even asking that. You keep acting like she's unpredictable and prone to sudden violence, but he grabbed her f***ing ass. You left me a message? You weren't home. Like always. You broke up with my machine. Movie inspires Russell Brand break up with Katy Perry 19 years later. Ah, oh, the perks of being a wallflower. What? I, I ever saw that movie. Did I get the reference wrong? This movie is 85 minutes and it's wasted the last 10 on Buffy being so unpopular she has to settle for Luke Perry. You know, uh, Buffy, you're not like other girls. Gag me with a wooden stake. Skip, who did her hair? Don't tell me she did this perfectly tight bagel bun all by herself. Friends weren't expecting her here and were making fun of her for showing up. And her parents certainly don't give a f Considering that a bunch of vampires are about to attack the school, shouldn't Buffy's cramps be acting up? Or does her lady boner cancel out the vamp cramps? Don't worry. They can't come in unless they're invited. I thought that was homes, like private residences. Does that rule apply to high school gymnasiums? I already invited them. Also, if they're invited, why are they standing at the door and not coming inside? I have detention slips here and I'm not afraid to use them. Wasting Steven Root. Eleventy billion vampires out here, but they all attack Buffy one at a time. Spanking with monkey. Honestly, it's taking forever for this dance gym to empty. Vampires are everywhere, people are panicking, and the gym is still half full. Five minutes later, I'll get you Buffy and your little dog too. Quoting the Wizard of Oz in vain. Aren't there times when you just feel less than fresh? Man. First cramps now quoting a feminine hygiene commercial. This movie is obsessed with female health issues. Buffy stands still and merely watches while the one-armed vampire grabs a bludgeoning device and hits her with it. That's what you call bad choreography. Or Paul Rubens wasn't exactly moving fast on the set of this film. He says, we're immortal Buffy, and she dares him to clap, and then everyone is distracted by the main vampire playing an empty space violin while wearing gloves. Jesus, people, this movie was made to be sin. This is five sins in one scene easy. This is some bullshit. <laughs> Ah. I'm pretty sure it's taking forever for Pee-wee to die for the same reasons Family Guy has Peter moan over his injured leg for 10 minutes in several episodes. You know this is our night. Isn't this just like a few nights after the night when you walked away angry because she wasn't ready to face you? And since then, didn't she quit until just a few minutes ago? How is this your night? Your first real kill. She killed at least four other vampires before this one. Um, you cannot slam a body against the outside of an electrical panel and have it electrocute them. Also, if someone you are touching with your bare hands gets electrocuted, so do you. Silence. Rest is silence, that's it. Merrick told me I knew it all along. Music stopped. The literal music stops at the dance and now Bubby thinks she understands what Merrick was trying to tell her before he died and I'm still in the dark. What does the music have to do with anything? What the hell is a gigawatt? Buffy has a revelation that will change the game, but Lothos just casually leers at her from behind and tries to rub her shoulders. Detention! Detention! Wait, is the world of Buffy the Vampire Slayer in Derry, Maine, where nobody can see the horror except a select few people? I'll say it again, this movie isn't nearly crazy enough to get away with these jokes. Vampires that use samurai swords, with apologies to Blade. Pike comes running in with a stake in his right hand, and what does he do? He jumps on Lothos and doesn't finish the job. Why? Because Buffy has to do it, I guess. But if that's the case, why bother making a scene where Pike holds a stake in his hand ready to kill the vampire? Lothos has been a top vampire for centuries, and this is how he's gonna go. This is worse than how they killed Omar on the wire. Now, finally, after all the danger has passed, the students are willing to leave the gymnasium. Bunch of dicks. Where the f*** is this? Is this outside their high school? Is their high school located in an industrial district? But when they drive off, it doesn't look like they're anywhere near a school. F*** 
f*** is this place? It was it was like a nightmare in there. Okay, so why were you giving detention slips to people with stakes in their hearts? I mean, does your character know how ridiculous that is, or did he think he was being serious? Actually, that might sum up the movie's tone more than anything. This unfunny prolonged death continues in the f***ing credits. I bet this asshole will get some shawarma later. It'll be a goddamn riot. You don't want to go for a ride, do you? There is one thing. What? Okay. Okay. I think we both get the point. Arda. Arda? When he comes to you in your dreams. What did he say? He said, I can smell your From the out of Springfield. He's about to hit a chestnut tree. Ah! Would I get my ass kicked if uh, I ask you to dance? The Yule Ball has been a tradition of the Triwizard Tournament. Quite an experience to live in fear, isn't it? That's what it is to be a slave. You are my destiny. I'm your density. 